now we're going to go ahead and get started. So again, welcome to today's presentation with the Career Services Department. We have an awesome session on best practices, career advice for nurse educators, and for non-nursing colleagues as well. Um, our contacts have created um, some really great content to share for non-nurse educators also. Um, our presenters are from Higher Ed Jobs and College Recruiter. For those of you who are not as familiar with these two organizations, you're going to learn a lot about them in today's presentation, the different resources that they provide for individuals looking to get into higher education, especially with higher ed jobs, and then the different resources and tools that College Recruiter provides to current students and alumni as they begin their job search. With that being said, I'm going to introduce you to our presenters. From College Recruiter, we have Faith Rothberg with us. She is the Chief Executive Officer with College Recruiter. And then our second presenter is Kelly Shruin. Kelly is the Director of Editorial Strategies for Higher Ed Jobs. So great um, ladies that we have with us this afternoon. They're going to tell you a little bit more about their background. So I'm going to hand things over to Faith and Kelly, and I hope that you all enjoy today's presentation. Great. Thanks so much, Tiffany. Uh, we're very excited to be here. I'm Faith Rothberg, and as Tiffany said, I'm the CEO of College Recruiter. And uh, College Recruiter is a job search site for students and recent grads to find employment. Um, and we consider recent graduates zero to three years out. It is for um, grad students looking for that first job after grad school as well. Um, but not as focused only on higher ed, like Kelly. So Kelly, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself too? Thanks, Faith, and thank you, Tiffany, for, for having both of us today. Yes, as Tiffany said, I'm the Director of Editorial Strategy at Higher Ed Jobs. And for those of you who don't know Higher Ed Jobs, we're, we are the leading job board and resource center for higher education. So we're super excited to be here today. In addition to my role at Higher Ed Jobs, I also am an adjunct uh, professor at two universities in the Chicago area. And I'll be talking about that a little bit later in the presentation. So um, with that brief introduction, I think we're going to start to uh, get into our content here. So before the, the presentation, uh, Tiffany sent out uh, you know, a, a brief questionnaire to get a few uh, items or questions that you guys were were hoping to get answered. So what we decided to do is start with some statistics. And these are postings, as you can see, on the next couple slides are education and um, nursing faculty. And these are just from our site, from higher ed jobs. So as you can see, the, and this is a, from a few weeks ago, um, but the, the numbers haven't changed a, a ton. But we had a question kind of regarding, um, you know, positions and where they're located. So I thought I'd put a few slides up there with that information. So you can see that for education faculty, we have a little over 1,200. Um, this is uh, all, um, and this is what's currently on the site, both um, in K through 12 and higher ed. And then you can see that the top five states where these, the, the universities or colleges are, um, and I guess I should say, and uh, um, K through 12 are listing it. So uh, California, Texas, Illinois, New Jersey, and Florida. In terms of nursing faculty, you can see we have almost 1,300 uh, currently on our site. And then there's the top five states that um, the positions are located within uh, California, Texas, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, and Illinois. So I decided to give a little bit, break this down a little bit further and give you um, some background from the past year in, turn, in terms of um, listings. I know obviously a lot has changed in the past couple months um, with the pandemic, but I thought I'd give like a, um, you know, overview, of, you know, so you guys could see how many postings we had on our site for um, the past year from April of 19 until the end of April of 2020. So you can see that we have, um, and again, this is just on the education side, the nursing is on the next slide. We have um, a lot of categories, subcategories there. And you can see there's you know a little over 5,000 total, and it, it, we divided it down to part time and full time. And then you can see the, uh, the on campus category, and then um, the positions that are online. And in terms of nursing, there's only one category, so that's why there's not a whole list of all the, the different um, uh, categories of education. So there's a little over 4,500 
total nursing positions from the past year. You can see how that's split up between part-time and full-time. And then you can see the majority of those are on campus. And then there's a little less than 200 that were posted for, for online. So I, um, the reason I, I wanted to put this up there was not to you know, dissuade anyone's interest from potentially teaching online, but I just want to you know, give um, kind of a, a picture of what, you know, what is going on and just to, to let people know that it, it's a competitive market, but there's definitely positions there. So hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of background on that. So now I'll turn it over to Faith for, um, for her to uh, talk a little bit on hers. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. So um, in regard to statistics, like I said, um, our site is more of a general job board uh, for the for the entry level niche. And so um, I did a search here on uh, nursing and then down the left hand side where you can find the categories, I clicked on education and you can see we have 76 um, types of instruction. Um, they're not all going to be adjunct um, in higher ed, at, you know, at the uh, colleges and universities, but it's a it's a place to start, a place to get maybe a few extra jobs that you can um, apply to, and um, in higher ed in general, um, in education in general, there's definitely some other opportunities as well. And um, I will. Uh, we're going to move on and we're going to talk about um, advice on how to find a teaching position. And let's start with technology, how we're going to use technology to help with your job search. So Tiffany had, had definitely asked us to give you more information about how to use our site um, and what kind of resources you can find um, available on our sites. And so um, there's a few things I just wanted to note here. We have um, a whole uh, piece on job search advice, and in that, uh, with that link, you can see many different um, articles uh, and information around um, being able to write a resume, um, how to do research, how to network. Uh, how to get your resume seen, all sorts of things like that. So I would advise go in there for sure. Um, and then we also have something called um, a resume builder. Um, there we go. Uh, Tiffany just put that pop up. You can see uh, how we have different um, ideas for resumes, cover letters, things we'll talk about later getting, um, getting prepared to interview. Um, and so I would take a look at those items, um, as well as we have uh, the ability for you to get a resume critique on our site. They work with you to look at the resume you've started or created and then help give you strong suggestions on what um, you can change uh, and what would make it better for applying online. Um, the way that our job search works itself, it's Actually, um, we use a, a Google search technology that is fabulous because um, Google has the best search on the internet. And you can use keywords, um, keywords or job titles, um, and then there are the subcategories along the side of job category, company, or employment type that you'll see as you type in different keywords. Um, and you can also type in the location so that um, you're looking for your area. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool about our job search is that when you search, instead of saying I want to find a job within 50 miles from our um, from my house or 10 miles from my house, I want to find a job that takes me 20 minutes to get to, or um, that kind of thing, because it's based on commute rather than on distance, um, which is much more relevant, especially in big cities like Chicago, New York, LA. So that's helpful too. And then um, we also have job match alert emails, which basically when you go out and do a search, it'll ask you if you want us to send you new jobs as we get them that um, have that job title or category. 
and then you'll receive them in your inbox. And we also have, um, oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention that's not on our site, but that's really important about using technology is to really research um, companies that you're interested in by going out on the internet, not only looking at their site, but other things about them that are in the news or pertinent to that um, organization. And with that, let's move on to the next slide. And I'll turn it over to Kelly. Thank you. Um, like College Recruiter, we have some great tools as well. We have um, some similar things that Faith was, dis was discussing. As you can see from this slide here, we have some options. Uh, one is creating job agents. It's um, one of my favorite things, I must say, about our site. And I actually personally have had a job agent since 2001. And what it is, and I, I, uh, I think it's a great tool because it, it takes a lot of work out of the, the, the job search because you can go in and create an account on our, our site. It's, it's totally free. And you can put in, similar to like what Faith was saying, kind of what your um, you know, specifications are. So you can, you know, maybe you want an online teaching job in Massachusetts, or you want a full-time job in you know, the Florida area. Um, so you can do things like that. And what it'll do, it will, it, it's up, up to you how often you want to, well, I mean, obviously it depends on how many positions um, are posted and come, come through the site, but you can sign up to get you know, it daily or if it comes weekly or whatever it might be. So I highly recommend creating a job agent, because like I said, it, it does the work for you, so you don't have to go and search, you know, all the different university sites. It, it'll come right to your inbox. Uh, and then you also can see some other things that we have. Um, you have the ability to post your resume or your CV. Um, you can save jobs, um, and this is all through your, your account. It's called Organizer, so you can organize jobs. You can see which ones you've applied for, you can you know, track your applications. And then the other thing is we have um, numerous resources in terms of uh, articles on job search advice. We have interviews with experts in, in higher ed. Um, we have uh, book reviews. So we have tons of resources out there that will hopefully help you become um, the, the, the best job seeker, but then also the best higher ed professional as well. So I highly recommend you to to take advantage and try to check those um, sources, uh, those resources out on, on both of our, our sites. Um, because the more information you have, the better you are going to be at approaching your job search. Oops. Let me get that arrow to move, move uh, ahead here. So we've covered a lot so far. We've covered some statistics and, and how to use technology. But then we also want to cover the basics of your job search. And we know most of you probably have been through writing cover letters and, and writing your, um, your, you know, creating your resumes and interviewing and stuff like that. But we thought we'd highlight a few things to consider, either maybe as a refresher for many of you, or maybe you'll consider a new approach that you haven't taken before. So um, in terms of, of cover letters, um, I want to give um, a few examples on what to, to uh, how, how to approach that. So I think most of you guys know that it, it's a way that you can, you know, truly sell yourself. Um, it's not to repeat what is in your resume, but it helps you connect the dots for that future employer. So um, what I mean by that is, and, and this is kind of one of, the, one of the questions that we received before the presentation was, how do I get a position if I don't have necessarily you know, teaching experience or, or if I don't have that exact um, bullet point that they're looking for in, in their, um, their job posting? Well, the cover letter is a great tool to use to um, highlight your transferable skills. So things that you might be doing in your current job right now. Maybe you're the, the leader of a, of a committee or maybe you have um, you know, volunteered on, you know, some type of program at your workplace. Um, the other thing I want to, you know, definitely highlight is use your, your experience as a student. So for those of you who want to teach online, obviously a college or university is, want, is going to want you to be familiar with um, the, the platform technology or, 
you know, they want you want, want to know that you can, you know, are easily um, can be trained on that. So, for example, I currently use Blackboard at both of my institutions that I, I, I teach at. So, you know, you guys as students could highlight that in your resume saying, I am uh, extremely familiar with, you know, Blackboard or whatever it might be, you know, Adobe, or, you know, whatever technology. So, again, what I'm saying is connect the dots for them. Just because it's listed in your resume, they might not know that, oh, this person does have leading experience or this person has created a, a, a training class on whatever it might be. So um, transferable skills are, are a great way to highlight why you'd be um, a good fit for that position. So explain why your competencies could meet their specific needs and, and objection, or object, um, objectives, not objections. <laughs> so what can you do to, to help them? And then the other thing I want to uh, make sure that uh, I highlight is to not use vague words in your cover letter and, and or statement. So what I mean by that, and this, this can bleed over into your, the resume as well. So when you say, I'm a, I'm a, you know, a good team player and I have good communication skills, like that, that doesn't show or, or say anything. It just, it's a kind of an overused statement. So you have to support that with evidence. Why are you a, a good, um, you know, a, a team player, or why are you, um, you know, why do you have effective communication? And then, you know, go on to explain, because I've, you know, done, I've been the leader of this committee or whatever it is, or X, Y, Z. So uh, a few articles that I would love to, to highlight that, and I, um, I, don't, I don't have a, a link, um, you can just search it on our site under the news and resources. We have a couple, um, One's called one is, or one article is is your cover letter persuasive and that is by Christopher Lee, and then we have another article called Cover Letters: A New Technique by Justin Zackel. So again, if you just go to our, our site and, and search under Cover Letters, and you can even search under those authors. There's some great information there to help you kind of craft that that uh, that cover letter. So I will. Oh, no, sorry. I have one more thing before I turn it over to Faith. So um, the other thing I wanted to, to touch on was teaching statements. So some positions might call for a teaching statement, and all this is is they, they want to know why you want to teach. What you know? What what's the passion behind you know your your uh, your you wanting to teach? What is your philosophy toward teaching? So it's good to have those um, ideas already crafted and it'd be great to put it into a, you know, a formal teaching statement. And even if the employer doesn't necessarily ask for this in the application, uh, you can actually have this ready to go because when you are um, called in for that interview, these are the, going to be the type of, of the, the questions they might ask you, like why, why teaching now? Like you, you know, why are you bringing, um, you know, your skills from nursing into uh, teaching, what you know, and, and you could be able, you should be able to explain that clearly. So if you already have a teaching statement ready to go, I'm not saying you you pass over a, a written statement to them in the interview, but having it in your mind and ready is a is a great way to be prepared. And that's a lot. Obviously, being prepared is is key when you're going into to the interviews. So anyway, I'm going to back up. I know I got to head to interviews, so we'll <laughs> go back to uh, to resumes, and I'll hand it over to Faith, and she'll she'll talk a little bit about resumes. Thanks, Kelly. Um, <clears throat> one comment that I'd like to make, um, in addition to what Kelly was saying, within the cover letters, and and um, is that one one mistake a lot of people will make in a cover letter is they will give the reasons why they would love to work for the organization. Um, what that does, though, is the organization says, great, well, that's great that you'd love to work for us, but why and what are you bringing to the table? So if you can turn it around and talk about the value that you would bring to them, um, that, would be, that would be the best way to go. So using Kelly's examples of <clears throat> of some uh, experience you might have that you want to call out in your cover letter, make sure you talk about why that would be valuable, how, how and why that would be valuable to the organization that you're applying to. And in that same regard with resumes, um, one, of the, one of the most important things to do um, 
especially as you apply to jobs online, is to really tailor your resume to the positions that you're applying for. It's more important to take time and give a quality effort to jobs you really um, think look like ones you would really want versus just throwing your resume out there um, to whoever. And um, I don't know if you have ever seen, but if you go out on Indeed, you can do a one click and just send your resume to a, a bunch of places. And I think that's um, the worst thing you can do. Uh, so um, tailoring them to the specific position, um, looking at what might be in your resume, like an um, ob objective statement, and if it matches the, the kind of um, person they're looking for, looking at what your experiences are, and if they're not um, not quite in line with the recommendations in the resume um, or the required uh, kinds of experiences. Sometimes you can articulate them in a bit different way so they line up better. Um, with what they're looking for. And uh, also, one of the things that uh, happens online is that your resume, um, when I say make your resume system ready, there are um, software, there's software out there called Applicant Tracking Systems. They call them ATSs for short. And every large organization has an applicant tracking system. And that software actually uh, can make or break your resume being seen because of uh, the way that it will provide those resumes back to the recruiters that are reading them. Um, and especially if you're applying to something that many, many people are applying to, you want to make sure you have a good shot at that. So um, there are some really basic things uh, like the idea of lining everything up on the left. Um, but all those details can be found in, um, we have a couple articles on our site. One is called Getting Your Resume Ready for the ATS on that job search advice page. And another one is um, actually, uh, oh, where is the, the other one would actually be just, um, the best way to write a resume and looking at the resume critique and getting some feedback there because uh, the provider of the feedback actually will give you feedback for um, the best way to get it onto those ATXs. So um, that's really important. And there was one other thing I was going to mention. Um, the other piece would be um, well, I can't remember what that next item was going to be, but um, in the meantime, I think that uh, we'll move on. And it, like um, Kelly said, we're not really going to talk about interviewing today, but when we talk about being prepared for moving um, for your job search, a couple of items you want to have at the ready before you even um, interview are uh, references so that uh, you can give those to future employers. And those really can be both personal and professional references. Um, and professional references, um, think of ones that relate toward, uh, toward things you might have done in your job that you can refer to as some of the experience for teaching. Um, so maybe a boss where you did some training of other nurses or um, training uh, patients. And then the um, lastly, it's really important to um, send thank you notes. And uh, if you can find, sometimes they'll just be um, the recruiter that you talk to, the HR professional, but other times you'll have interviewed um, even toward the beginning with the uh, hiring managers. And so you'll want to make sure that you at least connect with them on LinkedIn and send them a thank you that way at a minimum. Um, and you can see at the bottom, we've provided um, those links again to places where you can find tips on how to build resumes, um, how to build cover letters, and 
teaching statements and all that good stuff. Uh, so let's now move on to networking. And um, what really boils down to with networking, um, after all these years of technology and how much that's, how far that's come, networking really has been done for many, many, many years in different ways and is still one of the best ways to get a job. And so with technology, we can start with LinkedIn and um, be able to uh, try to search and look for people that might have um, the same background as maybe the kind of job you're looking for or um, have, would be people that have staff that report to them that are looking for uh, the kind of job you're looking for, um, where you can reach out, connect, and um, try to start a conversation around working in that industry. The other great networking is really more hands-on, and that's to spread the word with your friends and family. There's nothing better than getting a connection of a connection of a connection. Because even if you don't know the person um, that, that actually knows the person that you want to talk to, you still can use their name because someone else has said it's okay, and you can then um, have a starting point to connect. Um, and, the, and then uh, informational interviews are really, um, really important. And one of the easiest uh, ways to find out more, because most people, um, if you talk to them or if you ask them, they would love to talk about themselves, which sounds kind of funny. But if you reach out to someone and you say, you know, you're in the exact type of job that that I think I'm looking for, but I'm in um, grad school right now and finishing up my education, and I'm wondering if if I could have an interim, if you would meet me for coffee or, or virtual coffee these days, um, for an informational interview. And what happens is that you start to, um, people are usually willing to say yes. So what I did once, um, that really worked well for getting a job when I moved back to Minneapolis was I had gone to the University of Michigan for my MBA. And at the time, um, I can date myself, there was not an internet. And so I couldn't do things online. But what I did was I called the Alumni Association and I asked them for a list of alumni in my area, back in Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul area, that um, had were involved in technology at all because I had a computer programming degree. And I got this list, and sure enough, on there were a number of people. And as an example, one of them was a director in an IT department at, at Target. And I asked him if I could meet him for coffee, and we had coffee. And as we were talking, and I was finding out more about how his career went, he started asking me about myself and what my background was already, and then he told me there were two or three managers in his department that he would tell about me, and they would reach out um, for a potential job, which I, you know, never formally asked him for. So it's a really great way to leverage your networks like that, um, and uh, and then the other thing about that is to make sure 100% that you thank them for their time and their effort and um, ask them if you could reach out to them in the future because that's another good way to you know, go around again um, when you want to make a move. So now I'll turn it over to Kelly. Okay, yeah, Faith, those are some great examples. I, I want to add just a, a, a few things here. In the information gathering campaigns, uh, or similar to what Faith was referring to in the informational interviews. So you are just, you're, you're touching base with your contacts and uh, learning more about, yeah, their position or what their field is or what their, their company is about. Um, but the, and this kind of goes for, for all of these bullet points on these networking slides. A lot of networking is just about practice and becoming 
comfortable with asking people and, and also coming, becoming comfortable with talking about yourself. And I know it's sometimes hard for um, introverts. I, I've, I've been there. I mean, you go into a room and you're like, sometimes it's daunting. It's, it, you don't know anyone and your job is to market yourself or sell yourself. And it's sometimes uncomfortable to talk about yourself. So the more you practice, the, the easier it'll get. And that's why I suggest starting with um, these information gathering campaigns with friends and family and, and, and kind of, um, you know, meet, meet for, um, well, yeah, when we can meet for face at virtual coffee, uh, when we can meet for lunch, um, you know, someday, uh, you know, start with people that you feel comfortable with and it'll get a little bit easier. And be, be yourself, be authentic, because people know when you are, you've got this, you know, preset speech and are trying to be someone that you're not. So just be yourself and um, it, you know, things can happen naturally. And, uh, you know, there's other bullet points there, you know, use your career development offices, you know, just like your network, use your institution, um, what, what um, type of services they offer. And if you can put yourself out there with some volunteering options, again, this is about practice and becoming um, comfortable. So there's tons of networking opportunities, but like I said, it's just about trying, to try, trying and, and uh, becoming more comfortable and just practicing. So the next um, slide here is talking about being open. And this is when I referenced uh, my positions earlier in the presentation. I wanted to share uh, a few different ways that I actually um, have gotten positions over the years. So this year, I'm going on my 17th year of teaching online. So I've taught at three different universities. Uh, I started my, um, actually I take that back, I, I've, I have taught at four different um, universities. And two of them, uh, I started out as a staff member there on campus. And I you know, worked hard and I, you know, had a develop, develop a relationship with the, um, the chair of the department and he ended up asking me if I'd be interested in, in teaching. And I said, yes, I, I'd, I'd love to. So that was, that was one way and that was how I got my position at Illinois Institute of Technology. And the other position I um, had was at a, a small um, college downtown called, called Kendall College. And that actually was through, I, I got that position through higher ed jobs. I saw the, the um, posting online. I, it was sent to my inbox through the job agent. I applied for it and went in through the interview and um, connected and was able to teach there for a while. And then uh, my other position that I've been teaching at now, I think for probably seven years, was through a friend of a friend like networking thing and it just I wasn't looking for it it just happened I was at a um, a friend's 40th birthday party and I was striking up conversation with someone I'd never met before and we were talking about you know you, you talk about um, you know what do you what do you what do you do and uh, I explained to her what I did and she's like oh I actually I just was um, just accepted a position at Elmhurst College, you know, teaching, uh, I think it was real estate management or something uh, along that, those lines. And she's like, but I've never done it before. I've, I'm not sure what to, you know, what I'd be doing. And I, I said, well, I, I've been teaching for, you know, at that time, I don't know, what, you know, like 10, 12 years. And I said, I'd be happy to give you some, some pointers. And she's like, if you want me to pass your resume along to the person in charge of the MBA program, see if they have any openings, I, I would be happy to do that. And I'm like, sure, that'd be great. So I, you know, gave her my resume. She passed it along to uh, my now boss and I ended up getting the position. So it's interesting that um, the point I'm bringing up is I, re I, I was able to secure these positions in all different ways, you know, through networking, through proving yourself in a current position, through, um, you know, applying online. Um, so that's what I mean by be open. And going back to what I was saying about, um, you know, being uh, comfortable and confident, uh, you never know who you, you might, you know, might be talking to, how they could help you in the future. But then also I was able to kind of, it, it can't always be a one-way street, like I want something from you, can you help me, can you help me, can you help me? 
So if you build that relationship and kind of be like, oh, yeah, I, I, I might be able to do this uh, for you, that that could um, definitely be, be helpful. Um, and the thing I want, actually I wanted to, one more thing I wanted to say about my Illinois Institute of Technology position was, and I'd like for you guys to keep this in mind for those of you who are interested in teaching online, you might have to, to take some, um, some, some steps to get there. So what I mean by that is, I was on campus teaching a, a, a on campus class, and it, I had um, I don't know it was like pilot. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hi, you guys. We, just... we lost Kelly for a second, but it looks like she's back. So we're just going to give her a quick moment to reconnect her audio and we'll continue on with the presentation. Thank you for your patience. I apologize for that. Is everyone able to hear me now? I can. Yep. Okay, great. So um, I am not sure where I end up cutting uh, cutting off. I was I was, I was going into um, a I'll, I'll I'll start over quick with my my uh, um, example from when I was started to teach at Illinois Institute of Technology with the on campus. I was in a physical classroom. And I had you know approximately 20, 25 students, but about eight to ten, maybe maybe more than that, were actually in the live classroom. And then my my um, lecture was recorded and then put on the internet. And so I was doing both. I was doing like a hybrid class. And after several years of doing that, I saw that more people were like going towards the uh, learning online, and less people were physically coming to the classroom. So, like you know, two maybe two students or three students were, were physically in in the um, the classroom. So I eventually I asked my chair that you know I, I said Few, fewer people are coming to the classroom. So do you think we could put this class all online? And he he said fine. So I'm I'm saying that because if you can get your foot in the door and get a teaching position, you know maybe it's on campus. It's not to say that you couldn't eventually transition that into online. So keep keep your um, your mind open and um, you know there's some possibilities could could go from there so move on there I'll toss it back over to Faith great thanks Kelly those were some great examples of how you got your different positions um, it's, it's fun to have one person have so many different ways that they got their positions that's really cool um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, your personal brand. And uh, one of the things that we look at when we talk about what's a really good fit for you um, as a person in your job, it, we usually talk about looking at three things, and that's your skills, what skills do you have, what kind of experience do you have, um, and what skills are, are the strongest for you, really leverage those strengths. What are your interests? And, and what are your values? And when those three are all in alignment in a particular position, then it ends up being a really great fit. And you end up being really energized by your job rather than your job kind of um, feeling just like a job, uh, basically. So understand what those strengths are of yours and what, what you care about. And then like Kelly said earlier in the presentation, it's not always easy to talk about yourself, um, but do. And if you do it from a really sincere place, a really authentic place, that's what comes through. And um, it's important to do that because otherwise, um, if you don't kind of stick up for yourself, no one else will. And that's basically what you're doing. So um, really understanding what your personal brand is and then being able to really talk about it through those cover letters, through informational interviews, um, and things like that. Um, and then that'll come out in the interviews and uh, make it much easier to land that, that next job. Um, and then, as I was stating before, the other really important thing to do to prepare, um, not only for the interview, but even where you want to apply, 
is to really research your target institutions, the ones that, um, whether it's because of location, like Kelly said, you might have to do some um, in-person classes first um, to gain some of that experience and then, uh, and then move to online. Um, or whether it's cer certain types of institutions that you like because of their mission and their vision um, and things like that. They have the same values as you do. So really take the time to do that and, and build up a strong list of where you want to, um, where you ideally would want to apply um, and look at what's available in those places. And um, I think, Kelly, I was going to turn it back over to you. Is that right? Yeah, and I, I can't remember. Faith, you didn't um, mention the, uh, the in, in terms of job postings, meeting the qualifications. Did you already talk about that? Oh, no. That's that, thank you. No, that's another point I really wanted to make. Um, it, it is known, um, especially for women in the workplace, that when you're looking at a job posting, um, to be quite honest, most job postings are written much more extreme than what they really need to have for the position. What I mean by that is a lot of the requirements um, really should not necessarily be required. They may actually be recommended or, or preferred. And so um, many women will look at those requirements and let's say there's 10 of them. If they don't meet at least eight or nine of them, they won't apply. But what we see statistically is that men will, will apply um, anyway, even if they only have three and say, well, I, you know, I can get the rest on the job. I can kind of um, talk up the things I do well and get through the interview. And, um, and we find they end up getting a lot more, um, they get hired more because of that. So don't be afraid. Um, to apply to a job that you think you might only have, you know, four or five of the requirements, uh, you know, like a third or a half of the requirements, go for it anyway. And there's ways that you can see that even though you might not have the work experience in those, you might actually um, have that experience from something else you've done in your life, from volunteering or things you did with your, um, with your children or your family or, um, things you might have done at uh, other organizations um, where you weren't necessarily paid for it, but they are definitely um, experiences that are of value. So thanks, Kelly, for reminding me that I wanted to say that. Oh, yeah, no problem. Well, I'll just talk briefly about the last couple bullet points there, and then we have a couple more slides, and then we'll open up for Q&A. But you can see the, the bullet point there in developing your elevator speech. I'm assuming many of you have, have heard of this. Um, you know, it's a usually a, a, like a 30 second little um, advertisement on yourself. So if you know if you were riding up an elevator and someone asked you know who you are or what um, you, what your goal is, you know, you have something already set. If you know if, if you have um, uh, a little introduction for your you know for yourself. And then the the bullet point about you know, make sure a lot of the job search process is about preparation. It's um, researching. It's practicing, like I've said. So preparing for phone and Zoom and in-person interviews. There's tons of resources out there. Um, obviously, you know, Faith and I both have, um, you know, a lot of resources on our sites, but there's there's tons of information out there. So, um, yeah, I recommend, you know, I, I would prefer you search our sites first. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, please, uh, you know, make sure that you do as much research as, as you can before you go in for those those interviews because you, you assume like oh I'll just do a Zoom interview and then um, you, you might not have the you know the right background uh, or you know the door is not locked and your toddler comes in or something like that so um, you know just you know things like that and the last one develop a tracking method to follow each application that can be you know a, a system software um, you know like I said you can track applications through um, higher ed jobs but that's obviously just jobs that you apply for our site but um, you know, I, I've been in job searches before, and it can come down to however, like it can be Excel spreadsheet. Just make sure you keep a track, you know, and organized of where you apply to, what date, you know, um, 
who the contact person is there, what date you should follow up on, you know, the application. So being organized just obviously makes the whole process a little bit easier. The last couple slides here, um, you can see is that I, I titled it, or we titled it, Be Kind to Yourself. So you have to realize that the, the job search is it's a it's a it's a trying time. It's emotional. It's a job like I said in the first bullet point, it's a job in itself. So be realistic. You know, you're not gonna most likely send out two applications and get two offers. I mean that that would be great and I, I certainly hope it happens, but you know, you have to be realistic. And like Faith was saying earlier, on the flip side, you don't you don't have to send out a hundred applications that are, are, are you know, cover letters, resumes that are kind of okay, hoping that you get um, you know some feedback so do your research take your time um, and it, hopefully the process goes exactly how you want but if not be okay with it don't take rejection as like oh, everyone is out to get me and I'm not qualified and I'm never gonna get a position but turn around and be like you know what what did I learn from that maybe that wasn't the right position maybe I didn't have my materials polished maybe I didn't um, have the basic interview questions you know, ready and, and prepared. Uh, maybe I didn't have that elevator speech prepared. So control what you can control. It's hard because the, the, the job search process is, it's overwhelming at times and there's a lot of things out of our control. We don't know when the HR person will be in contact, if they'll be in contact. We don't know who we will be always interviewing with. So there's a lot of unknowns. So that's why I suggest control what you can and that's where it comes into you can research. You can find out as much as you can on that uh, institution. You can find out as much as you can on interviewing and resumes. And like, obviously, you guys are doing a great step by being in this webinar today of trying to, you know, get get that leg up on how to get that next position. So, you know, plan and be organized. I, I think I've said that a lot about, you know, practicing and, and planning. Um, and and remember that you are are interviewing that company or that institution, that um, college, that department as well. And listen to your gut. So mm -hmm. they're asking you questions, but you also have to make sure that you are coming with questions for them. Like what type of um, climate are you potentially walking into? What is their philosophy on, on teaching and, and growing? And what makes a successful uh, professor at their university? And you know what areas of growth are, might there be? So remember that you can and should ask them questions as well. And um, like it says there, don't, don't take rejection as a failure, but you know, truly an opportunity to grow because you will get that position. So I just wanna uh, end here with this slide of some resources to consider. So the first couple, um, uh, uh, both, not bullet points, uh, links there are to both college recruiter and higher ed jobs if you're interested in creating an account for, um, with either of us. And then the last four um, are in regards to, I, we had a couple questions, you know, again, what Tiffany sent out. Someone asked uh, a question related to um, the shortage of nursing uh, faculty, and then someone asked a question on tenure. And the best thing for me to do, because I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert in, in uh, the uh, staffing of, um, you know, the, the, statistic, the statistics of um, the nursing uh, profession. So I just gave a couple links there. And the tenure one, American Association of uh, University Professors, AAUP, is a great source resource for, um, you know, any type of, um, like, faculty question that you can think of. And then uh, recently just the Coupa uh, HR Health Professions Brief just came across um, in my email, so I thought I'd share that as well. It gives um, you know, faculty salaries and outlooks. So I encourage you to look look up that as well. So that, unless Faith has anything else to add, we just kind of I, I just wanted to end here with with um, uh, our email from Higher Ed Jobs, and there's Faith's email, and um, just, we just want to say thank you. And Faith, do you have anything else to add before we open it up for questions? No, I think that was great, Kelly. Um, the be prepared, be prepared, I, I guess the only thing 
I, um, I actually started doing, as an employer, um, interviewing um, by saying the first interview would just be a five-minute interview, and I would have the candidate call me, and I would only ask them two questions. What would you like to know about college recruiter, and what would you like to know about the position? And I can tell you, some people were really, really not prepared, and I think those people were the ones that had too many resumes out there, had applied to too many positions, and didn't um, take the time to go and really look at why they were applying somewhere and if the position was something they really wanted. So that's my, my two cents on that. Um, and yeah, let's open it up for questions. Well, first off, I want to thank you, Faith and Kelly. Thank you for all this great information. They're going to actually be on a webcam, so you guys will actually be able to see them. Um, they're going to try to do that if our if the connection will let us. So there's Kelly. There we go. <laughs> and there's Faith. Okay. Let me go ahead. If you have any questions, definitely type away in the question and answer session. That would be great. Um, we will send out the um, PowerPoint presentation with the recording. And I know it's coming up on the end of the hour, but if you'd like to stay, you're welcome to stay and ask questions. We're going to stay a little bit and answer any questions you have. And also, just remember, if you can't stay, we are sending out the recording, which will have all the questions and answers with it. So let me get to the first question I saw here. One second. One of our students asked, what's the best style resume to have for an academic nursing position? Hmm. Hey, do you have any, do you want to take that? Well, sure. Um, the, the reality is that if you're going to be applying online, then you need to make sure the style of the resume actually fits the best way to do it online, which is not always the prettiest. Um, uh, most of it is so that the computer software program can read it in the right way, recognize keywords, um, recognize your dates of experience and things like that. And when we format resumes in pretty ways, um, with multiple columns and things like that, uh, it, it actually can put you in the black hole of the internet, <laughs> is what I call it. And, and that's no good. So it, to me, I don't think the style matters that much. Um, I don't know, Kelly, if you would know anything. Um, you know, I'm not familiar with, uh, with the medical world and what those types of, uh, resumes would look like or the higher ed world, but for doing an, one like that, do you have anything you want to add? Well, yeah, I think um, there's definitely not a one-size-fits-all approach. So, I mean, probably the, mo the more familiar when it, uh, common way when it comes to faculty is, you know, using a CV. And CVs tend to be a little bit longer than resumes, which most of you guys probably know. Um, so, you know, you can have um, if you, I'm not sure if anyone has, you know, publishing experience, things like that, but you can include that. But what Faith was saying, I, I, this is what I probably agree with, like, definitely the, you know, the most is the key words. So if, um, you know, yeah, we all want to look pretty and, and have all these different columns and, um, you know, it, it be, I mean, I'm not saying you should submit a, a uh, uh, you know, discombobulated uh, CV, but make sure you really hone in on what, like, what, like, for example, uh, you know, Blackboard, like I keep mentioning that technology, your, your, you know, your specific job titles, your experience, um, you know, like I said, research, things like that. So I guess that's my best example. I, there's, there's so many different ways to do, like you can do, depending on how much experience you have. Some people put, um, uh, you know, their, you know, if you've, if you're a new graduate, you would have a different type of resume or CV. You'd probably have your experience or your education more at the top. You know, if you're more experienced, you'd probably have, um, you know, your education towards the bottom. So it really, you kind of have to figure out what fits for you. And that's why I might, like, if I've been out of the um, job search world for a while, I would probably um, consider using a resume writing 
uh, resource for, for that because they would probably be able to advise you better um, than, than what Faith or, or I could do right now. So hopefully that helps a little bit, but it's a good question. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and we also provide that help out then with them for the students too. So if they would go under our career network, they can see some resources too for that. Um, another question I had is with the COVID-19, has this changed your the your the recruiting? Have you seen any changes? I know a lot of them are going to like Zoom interviews and everything like that. And and you said that there are um, resources for that on your on the sites or or have any um, pointers for students per se with that? You can go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, we Kelly first. <laughs> yeah, we definitely. Me, we, why don't I um, go ahead a while few articles she on you know, definitely navigating different types of, of interviews and you know from the the traditional interview to um, you know Zoom or or, or or phone interviews and I think and I, I probably sound like I probably sound like a uh, broken record. Yeah, you're yeah, right. you keep freezing up, Kelly. <laughs> But I, th I think I got the gist of what she said, which is... Am I frozen? That's Sorry. Okay. That's... Should I... Um, was I freezing there for a little bit? I'm not sure if people were able to hear me. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, okay. I... Okay. Why don't I can take off... Why don't I take my video off and see Great. if that helps so, a little bit? Um, so I would I would add to what Kelly. Okay, there we go. I'm going to stop my webcam and see if that helps. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm not sure if you had if I think, anything uh, to add about like, we, we have, have you know we have resources. We have a bunch of our, uh, our information on our site. It's it, it, actually on our YouTube channel. So if you go to um, YouTube. <laughs> okay, we lost Kelly all together now. Okay. Go ahead, Faith. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> so if you go to um, YouTube and go to the college recruiter page, you'll see there's a whole bunch of COVID-19, um, it's like a playlist for um, candidates or job seekers who um, are uh, looking for employment um, during this time. And, and of course, it's, it's really quite difficult right now. Um, Things are changing in the um, in our world in the uh, college grad um, and graduate uh, markets because a lot of the employers would typically go to campus, and so um, next fall when they were expecting to go to campuses and recruit for um, people graduating next year they're now finding that they're most likely going to do it all online. And so um, being really comfortable with technology like Zoom and um, I don't know, Tiffany, if, if any employers come through you guys in the career service site, then do you use Adobe Connect for that? Um, Faith, when we work with our employers for any type of virtual interviews, we traditionally use the platform that that employer has. So sometimes that's going to be Zoom. Other times it's going to be um, Skype. Skype, not as much. I think Zoom has definitely taken over Skype. Yeah. And in other instances, I'm trying to remember the name of that software. It's sitting in my mind, but I can't think of it right now. They use that platform a lot as well. Okay, like um, uh, now I'm blinking on it too. I know it's like WebEx. It used to be called, and it's something else now. But they use um, Hireview. They use Hireview a lot. I think about sixty percent of our employer partners use Hireview to do their digital interviewing, and. Okay. Some do also use WebEx, but it's a smaller amount that use WebEx. Okay. So, yeah, so you want to get really comfortable with some of those technologies if you can. 
Um, some of them, like Higher View, are really probably, a, you could, I'm not sure that you could really practice on that versus um, just being prepared for how um, other online um, interviews go. You know, a lot of um, a lot of organizations will also start with a phone interview, um, even typically when they were doing things in person. So that's another um, another thing to kind of research and look up is, um, you know, what are some typical phone interview questions? What do I need to do to prepare for a phone interview? Because it is a little bit different. Um, and same with the same with the video. Great. Hey, that's some great information. Thank you. Um, one other question that I had was, um, you talked about volunteering and preparing our students before they finish their degree mm -hmm. and having those resources for those students. And I know you have some um, resources on your sites and everything for students like that. Is there any other best practices that you can think of that to get started before they even actually ended their their program or their degree? Um, so for, for volunteering? Yeah, like how to get volunteering into the teaching realm of it if they have none of the teaching realm yeah, per I, se. Yeah, I think that, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of volunteer opportunities that may require um, coordinators, for instance, a volunteer coordinator, um, or volunteers that help train other volunteers. And by doing something like that, you'll be gaining some skills, some experience in, in teaching, in quotes, right? Because really, um, so much of being able to teach is also um, being able to train people and lead people. There are a lot of similarities um, in those kinds of opportunities. So finding um, volunteer jobs in your community, um, even some sort of teaching job in community ed, or working with your school, um, with the even the K-12 kind of school system and doing some volunteering there. Um, there may be opportunities in some of the higher ed schools as well, especially, um, I would think, community colleges, although I'm not sure, I'm kind of going off on a, um, a little bit of a guess here, but um, just looking for those types of things. I know somebody, when they were um, asking questions to help us prepare for the presentation, when Tiffany asked people, to send in their questions, one of them was like, would it be good to teach like a CPR class? Well, yeah, that would be fabulous, right? Because that's still something in healthcare and it is teaching. So anything you can do, and, and you know, another, another way to think about it is if you start to do a little research into what kinds of positions there are, and you look at what the requirements are, and you think about which you have and which you don't, then take those experiences that you don't have yet and figure out if there's something in some kind of volunteer position that would give you that experience, even if it's not directly related to teaching nursing. Um, and right now there's probably lots of opportunities to teach or like kind of voluntarily teach something online. <laughs> so I know yeah. my, <laughs> That's my, true. My, my 12 year old niece told me the other day she's doing soccer. And I said, you started soccer? Are you guys getting together? And she said, oh, no, it's on Zoom. <laughs> so they're doing soccer skills on Zoom. So her coach is on Zoom, and she is in her yard practicing moving the ball around. Um, so, oh, you know. that's, that is so interesting. Um, yeah. Tiffany just shared something. It's our um, is an American Reads is another, like you were saying, that teaching part of it. We actually have students that um, have gone through the American Reads program for federal work study positions. So that's a great resource, like you were saying. Um, Reading tutors and math tutors, those are so needed. And yep, that's great. Okay. 
So we're going to wrap up here in, in a few minutes. So if anybody has any other questions, go ahead and type that. Um, like I said, we will be sending out the, um, the PowerPoint with the recording. And if you did not receive it from your career specialist, we'll definitely get your email in there and make sure you um, get that recording plus the um, PowerPoint presentation. Um, one student has asked, um, I know for a rule of thumb, it's usually 10 years on a resume for experience. Would you say, Faith, to include anything longer than 10 years if it's teaching related, volunteer related, or would you stick with the with the 10 year mark? No, I would, I would put any, any work experience you have that relates to any kind of teaching. Um, because even if it's something really long ago, you can highlight that even in your cover letter, if it makes sense, that says, you know, since, you know, since I was young, I really have enjoyed teaching. And you can see that because of you know, 15 years ago, I actually had this position, whether it's a volunteer or um, was part of your work, um, you know, part of your professional work. I think anything that's relevant, um, it just strengthens your brand. Um, and, and so think of it that way when you look at like, how, what are my what are my skills, my, my strengths, what are my interests and what are my values? And if, if that fits and it fits the kind of job you're looking for, absolutely keep that in there. Okay. Awesome. It looks like we have Kelly back. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, and I was just listening to what Faith was saying, and I agree. I don't think there has to be a, a hard rule of 10 years. If, if you have ethical experience and it was, you know, 14 years ago, then put that on there. Not to say that you have to do like a whole paragraph of what you're role was, but even having you know listed, because then again, those could be keywords that the the system picks up. So yeah, definitely. Cool. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? It looks like we have answered everything. Like I said, um, thank you, um, Faith and Kelly. This was some great information and resources and sharing your personal path. That was very, very interesting to hear, too. Um, we do have a survey for our students to complete. It's our employer spotlight survey. Um, Tiffany is putting it up right now. So if you could actually complete that before you do leave the room today, that would be greatly appreciated. And thank you all for um, joining. And like I said, we will send out the recording. And um, Faith and Kelly have graciously offered to do to send out the presentation too, along with that. So we will get that out to the students. Um, I would say later today or tomorrow. Um, and thank you everybody for coming. And thank you again, Faith and Kelly. Tiffany, do you have anything to add? I don't have much to add. I really enjoyed the informational session, Faith and Kelly. Again, echoing Sarah Lynn, thank you for taking the time to present to our students and our alumni here at Purdue Global. Very valuable information, um, especially coming in after a long holiday weekend. So greatly appreciate it. So our attendees, thank you for listening in and asking questions. Um, I think it was a great session. Thanks so well, thank much. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. And I just wanted to add one more thing. I didn't, I didn't put when I put up the um, email up there. Uh, if if anyone has questions on um, accounts or you know the technical side of finding things, setting up job agents and things like that, that job seeker email address will be great. And if you have any other questions, uh, you know that are directly related to me, that person will definitely forward those on to me. So um, feel free to to email. Um, anything to that job seeker address, and if it's directly related to me, it'll definitely get to me. So thank you again yeah. um, to everyone for for joining and listening, and um, we're honored to be invited. So best of luck to everyone in your your job search. Yeah, good luck. To end things up, I'm going to go ahead and play a little bit more music for those of you who are still within the room. 
But I hope that you enjoy the rest of your week and that you enjoy the rest of the day as well. Thank you again.